Recently, I shared this super lo-fi, pixely, retro skull artwork that I made on Instagram. And after sharing it, I had a couple of requests for just doing a quick breakdown for how I made this and how I got to this end result. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I did that. Uh, I'm also going to show you a couple of extra things you can do in Photoshop afterwards to just add some final touches to this. And I am, of course, going to be using Ditherboy to get this effect here. But also, since we just put out our Halloween update for Ditherboy, which is a free update with new features and this new theme, I just thought I would mention as well that we are, for the first time in like two or three years, doing a Halloween contest. So in Ditherboy, if you go to extras and click on Discord, then come to updates. You can read this message from my friend Christos, who runs the competitions and you can read the rules. Now, the reason I mentioned this is one, I'm obviously creating something Halloween themed in this video um, and it's still October. And two, one of the prizes here is our next software for free or as a prize for winning. So I've not said anything anywhere about what our next software is. And I'm not gonna do that in this video, but because we've got new stuff coming um, and it's pretty cool, fun little tool that we've made. Uh, if you follow this tutorial and enter the competition in the Discord, then you have a chance, obviously, at winning the next software. And there's other stuff here too you can win. It's not, to be honest, we're pretty relaxed with the prizes here when we do these. But when you join, there is a little bit of a wait and it's just because we get a lot of like bots and spam stuff trying to join. So please bear with me there. And if you're watching this after October, then I'm sorry that you missed it. But there's probably another one on anyway in November or December or beyond. So if you make stuff regularly with Ditherboy, then you may as well enter is my viewpoint. But with that out of the way, I will leave everything Ditherboy related linked below this video if you want to find out more. And I'm going to get straight into this. So as you can see, I've got this image open here. This is from a site called Freepick, I believe. I will leave it linked below. Obviously, other stock photo websites are available like Unsplash or Pexels. The only thing about the site I got this from is it's full of AI stuff. So you have to to filter out the AI if you would like to get the cool stuff like this. So I'm going to add a diffusion effect here just to get started. And then I'm going to go to palettes, Halloween, and I'm going to select the eclipse palette. If you would like to get the Halloween palettes, just go to extras, click on color palettes, and you can download them there and then install in adjustments, palettes, and bulk import. And then you will get the Halloween category as well. Now I'm going to use the eclipse effect here, but you can now in version five, dither and apply colors from source. So if you click on source here, it will just pull in colors from your image. Now it doesn't aim to distribute these colors exactly where they were in your original. However, it will use colors only from the original image and distribute them based on luminance and depth if you want to do that. But I'm sticking to the Eclipse palette here because that's what I did in my original. And straight away, before I start messing with any of the settings here, I'm just going to start up in the depth. So the thing here is I shared both the full image and I shared this cropped sort of zoom in on the skull. So if you want your entire image to look how this skull looks, then obviously you're going to need to up the scale here. But for this one, because all I did afterwards was crop, I'm going to leave the scale quite low and then I can just crop again afterwards, same way I did before. So the trick here, and I don't want to say that this is pixel art, it is very much not pixel art. Dithering, while it is visually similar to pixel art, well, people who make pixel art are literally placing all these pixels individually. So I don't want to sell this off as, as if it's pixel art when it's not. But the trick to getting that effect is just more depth. So if I go higher and higher with the depth here to like 16, 17, and then just up the midtones, up the highlights, more contrast. When you add depth, you're adding more space for color essentially. And so what happens when we're used to seeing dithering, if we lower the depth, like you're used to seeing these big patterns with you know a diffusion effect it's called error diffusion you're you're used to seeing the errors kind of when you do this something there's quantization and there's a noise added to images as well uh, obviously depending on what algorithm you use so adding more and more depth just kind of removes a lot of these artifacts from the dithering and you end up getting something that is just almost just being like reshaded or recolored by the palette that you've selected now this is not something that i typically go for because i like 
like to make sure my work looks dithered because obviously when I'm posting about this, I'm saying, look at this, look at this dithering in Dither Boy. But if you want to get a pixel art effect, more depth and a little bit of blur will go a long way to getting you there basically. And then obviously just your usual tweaking of the settings on the right to make sure that the balance is right, like luminosity wise. You know, if I went too low with the highlights and midtones here, you can see that the forehead starts to turn green, which is not what we would want. So like getting a nice balance where the shading is still coming in, but the vast majority of this skull now is this sort of off pale white is, is what I want here. Now, something to be aware of if you do, opt for maxing out the depth in order to get this kind of pixel art style effect is just that when you use an algorithm that is you know visually um very distinct like the Bayer algorithm or something like the modulated diffuse algorithm these are highly stylized like you would you know pick these out immediately whereas if you look at an Atkinson dither next to a Burke's dither. The pattern is different. Once you learn to spot it, it is different. The, the distribution is different, but they're not as visually like signature as, you know, like these other ones like waveform. So if you're going to use one of these dithering algorithms with a lot of character and a lot of like visual distinction, the cost of upping your depth to the point where you get the pixel art style effect is that you will lose some of the character from the algorithm just because the simplicity with the color is what allows for these algorithms to basically be so distinct like the reason this looks so distinct the Bayer dither here is because of the you know the binary and the color it's either black or white here so if we go to five you still the pattern remains it's still visually what you recognize as Bayer but as you keep going and you get to 12 15 16 and we're adding in the whites again to the skull like we did before it starts to just lose some of the personality so there's obviously you know there's a cost to everything there is a if you lean in on one thing then you've got to lean away from something else as is everything with like visuals and, and artwork and design and stuff but i've never really when i've done the tutorials i've never really like encouraged going too far with depth just because personally i think it stops looking like dithering even though it still looks cool it's just not something that i'm a massive fan of so for my my personal for my artwork i'm going to go for the astromakov dither which is what i did before and then i'm going to go to depth of five and i'm just going to tone down some of these adjustments as well so for me mine still looks like dithering and that's how i prefer it so and now i'm just going to do an export to clipboard and i'm going to load up photoshop to just show you the final touches basically for how I textured this one. So I've got the dither here and I'm going to pull in some textures, but you can use any texture you want. You just need two textures here. We don't want to do anything daft with the texturing that's going to overpower the effect we've just set up. So I'm using this pack called Photocopied. It's from my website. However, if you've already got Dither Boy and you are already in the Discord or you're waiting to join the Discord, if you scroll up in the updates, I've posted some of the files in here that you can just download. I do this regularly so if you watch a tutorial and you've already got Dither Boy and I go and use some other asset or whatever, I will generally just drop some of that asset in the Discord server. So yeah, go get that if you just want to try this out. Or obviously use your own paper textures that you got from wherever you like. All you need is a light texture and a dark texture. So I'm going to grab these two here. I'm going to drag them in and on the light texture, I'm just going to choose Darken Blend Mode. If you are not aware, the category here where Darken exists at the top all of these are different darken blend modes so darken is just going to compare the pixels from this layer to the pixels on this layer and where the pixels are lighter on this layer in our dither it will replace those pixels i.e it will darken them with the pixels from this layer from our texture so the result there is that the background is unaffected our main dithered woman here she's unaffected but the skull the highlights from the skull they get the blending so you get the paper effect coming through on the skull and then to tie it all together you just do your dark texture with a light and blend mode so again a light and blend mode all of these in the screen and light and category these are all light and blend modes and again by choosing screen we then get the texture come through on the darker pixels which the result there is that the the texture is uninterrupted it goes all the way through the image doesn't have any obvious outcroppings where it's not affecting you know the highlights or the shadows I don't really like to go any further 
different than that with texturing, especially on some work like this, because the main event here is the dithering. And then I think the reason that a couple of people mistook this for pixel art is just because I quite literally just cropped my Instagram post to just the skull, just by blowing up the original dither like this kind of to here so yeah i think that's maybe why this got mistaken as pixel art but hopefully it's helped hopefully you learned something here obviously you can apply this elsewhere now with the depth slider if you want to blow out the depth and just completely get rid of the dither pattern then you can do that but just be aware that it's going to cost you the more visually distinct dithering algorithms if you do that another little bonus here is if you just go and take effects uh and move the threshold up a little bit blow out the radius up the distance scale a little bit, add a tiny bit of fall off. You can get it to glow as well. And obviously you can just do a export to clipboard and then back into Photoshop, paste it underneath and maybe, you know, a little bit less intense with the texturing uh, and you can get a nice little alternate version here with a glow if you want. But anyway, thank you for all the recent support on Dither Boy. If there is a video you want to see, if you see me make any work with dithering uh, and you would like me to cover it in a tutorial, then let me know and I'll probably get it done. I really hate dating these tutorials. I hate that someone's going to watch this back in not Halloween when there is not a Halloween competition on. So I'm sorry if that's you. We will do more more competitions so just check here and there's there is probably one running if the discord server is still active if you are waiting to get into the discord server then i'm sorry if there is a wait time the wait time is there to make it better for you when you are in the server because there are lots of people who just try to join either with the intention of just muting it and never speaking in it or just with the intention of spamming and stuff like that so yeah i'm trying to keep it sort of just to people who need to be there, if you get what I mean. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.